Item number, SCP-673, Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. No living tissue is to enter the main containment area while SCP-673 is present. Dual airlock systems separated by decontamination and scanning cells are to be maintained at all times. Containment cell is to be immediately locked down during any maintenance or power failures with release only after review by site security. Equipment exiting the containment cell is to be sterilized and remain in quarantine for a minimum of two weeks before being reused. Containment cell maintenance is to take place only after SCP-673 has been removed to a temporary containment cell. All surfaces are to receive treatment by chemical agent Neo-X-9, with any overgrown areas extracted and rebuilt. Containment cell must be cleared of all personnel for no less than 12 hours before SCP-673 can be returned to primary containment cell. Temporary containment cell is to be flooded with Neo-X-9 for no less than 48 hours after SCP-673 removal. Independent instances of SCP-673 are to be severed and isolated as soon as possible after initial discovery. Evaluation of newly severed instances is to take place within 5 to 8 hours post-severing. SCP-673 instances found to have no research, production, or other value are to be incinerated immediately after evaluation. Instances added to the main contained mass are to be recorded and logged with central records. Any staff working in or around the containment area are to be placed in quarantine immediately after completing their given tasks. Observation of quarantined subjects is to continue for a minimum of two weeks. Any erratic behavior, growths, or other SCP-673 symptoms exhibited by subjects is to be reported to Site Command, with subjects being held for eventual evaluation. Description SCP-673 is a mass of organic tissues, connected in what appears to be a totally random assembly. These tissues include recognizable structures, such as hearts, digestive tracts, blood vessels, and brain matter. However, many tissue structures are not identifiable by composition or purpose. Tissue structures are also noted for their increased size, appearing 20 to 50 times as large as their normal counterparts. Sample tests have shown the basic structure of SCP-673 to have no known counterpart among normal organics and lacks any form of DNA or normal cellular composition. Tissues appear to operate without the need for any outside stimulation or substance, with hearts beating for days with no blood or nerve connections, and lungs continuing to expand and deflate even when severed and fully submerged. Tissues, isolated from the main mass, will grow into surrounding structures, using what appears to be tendons or thin bone-like structures to penetrate and spread over walls, floors, and ceilings. Tissues will operate indefinitely, with no tissue decay normally associated with exposed organs. SCP-673 appears to be infectious by an unknown means, with physical contact being the only constantly observed transmission method. Instances of airborne transmission have been reported, but are extremely rare. SCP-673 appears to prefer organic tissue, but will integrate with inorganic structures at a slower rate. Testing has shown that tissue integration appears to progress along loose guidelines in regards to inorganic structures. Pipes become veins and tracks, beams become bone-like supports, doorways become valves, etc. in a slow progression. The Shell Project has shown that, with sufficient space and ample amounts of organic materials, SCP-673 data expunged. Addendum 1. Note Organ dominance resulting in tissues with no human analog may produce unidentifiable behaviors. All records of subjects producing non-human tissue are to immediately be remanded to central records. All SCP-673 subjects are to be observed and recorded continuously during containment. 2. Full records of Shell Project available pending O5 review. 
Partial transcripts available to Level 4 cleared staff pending approval by Central Records. Document 88-9-R Infection Progression Initial stage infection begins at point of contact in 96% of all cases. Physical contact with SCP-673 will cause subjects to develop a small rash at the point of contact, which will fade within two hours. Subject will start to exhibit erratic behavior four to five days post-contact, with said behavior becoming more pronounced as infection continues. Behavior varies between infections, with increased appetite, paranoia, inappropriate appetite, and increased libido among common symptoms. There is no consistent behavior progression or development. However, behaviors appear to relate to the end-stage organ dominance. Mid-stage infection is variable, most often observed between two to three weeks after initial contact. Subjects will start to exhibit physiological changes, such as distortion of the physical frame, loss of hair, fingernails and skin, loss of bone density, lesions, abnormal bone growth, rash, increase or decrease of bodily fluids, and general muscle atrophy. Subjects will begin to exhibit organ dominance, with one or several areas of the body beginning to swell rapidly and absorb surrounding tissues. Subjects' behavior will begin to centralize around these areas. Example, stomach dominance, subjects engaging in continuous gorging, heart dominance, subjects going into prolonged violent and rhythmic spasms. End stage SCP-673 sets in five to six weeks after initial contact. Subjects will begin full integration with the dominant organ growth. Subjects will typically lose locomotion and the capacity for speech at this stage. Subjects appear to no longer require basic human needs, such as food or oxygen, and behave as a parasite on the main organ. Bodily tissues are absorbed and integrated by the forming SCP-673 organ body, with full absorption taking place 24 to 48 hours after end-stage onset. Any remaining will or mental capacity is deemed negligible at this point, with most emotional manifestations vanishing within two weeks. Document 003 Shell Project Memo to Project Staff let it be noted that instances of attacks by SCP-673 masses are easily attributable to random organ spasms observed in nearly all instances of SCP-673. Listing these incidents as attacks, especially in security documentation, is irresponsible to the point of dangerous and will constitute disciplinary action in the future. SCP-673 masses lack any appreciable nervous system in most cases and will retention is nil. Incidents of escape attempts and communication are clear examples of anthropomorphism and misidentification and are therefore not appropriate topics of study. Proposals to open dialogue with nervous system clusters will be subject to project command review and discipline. Dr. Kinder's incident should be a sufficient example regarding the need for professional detachment and logical thinking. A new project head will be appointed within the week, with Dr. Ahrens taking interim control. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-672, Rock Coral, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.